tonight at 9. Halloween is right around the corner. What officials want you to look out for? A village pop-up is back after two years following the COVID-19 pandemic. Find out which one. Vanessa Bryant suing Los Angeles County Sheriff and officers will tell you why. Plus, Homeland Security is making new protections for migrants coming to the U.S. What places are being protected? Cold temperatures to frost, and now sunshine to rain. But full forecast coming up and what you can expect to see on Halloween. Delaware County's only live television newscast from Ball State University's Unified Media Newsroom. You're watching NewsLink Indiana. Good evening. Thanks for being with us. I'm Grace Benkowski. And I'm Vincent Margarano. Halloween is right around the corner, and with that comes many activities that may impact your safety. News Lake Indiana's Emily Harless is joining us now. Emily, you spoke with police today about how to stay safe. That's right, Vincent and Grace. I did speak with them earlier, and police around the county are giving out tips for how to stay safe this weekend. Many of those tips were centered around annual events like trick-or-treating. As kids prepare for a new year of trick-or-treating after COVID, Delaware County Sheriff Tony Skinner wants to send them and their parents a message. Stay safe. You know, we would always encourage somebody, if they need help, call us, we'll help you. Skinner sending out tips to Delaware County residents on what to watch out for this spooky season. Obviously, stay in well-lighted areas. Don't go to houses that are sketchy. Check your candy when you get home. Don't eat anything that's unwrapped. A lot of common sense stuff. And while festivities for children may not be starting until the weekend, Festivities for Ball State students are beginning Thursday night with parties and trips to local bars. The chief of police at the University Police Department, Jim Duckham, sending out tips of his own for those older kids. If you're hosting parties, you know, we'd ask that you, you know, provide things besides alcohol. Clearly, if you're underage, you shouldn't be drinking, you know, but like have soft drinks, water, food for, for your guests. We'd also offer up that, like, don't post on social media to have an open house. And his biggest tip of all, use the lifeline law. If one of your friends needs medical attention because they've been drinking and everybody's underage, we want you to call. We want to be able to bring EMS. We want to be able to help people that, that would need our help. But even though safety is the number one priority for the police, there is one final thing Chief Duckham wants you to remember. Be safe, you know, with the stuff that you wear and, and hang out with your friends and have a great time. It's a, it's a fun night. And these are the hours set for trick-or-treating this weekend. Albany will have trick-or-treating on Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. Daleville and Gaston will both have their trick-or-treating on Saturday from 5 to 8. And on the day of Halloween, Muncie, Yorktown, Selma, and Eaton will hold their trick-or-treating hours. Muncie will be open 5 to 8 as well as Eaton. Yorktown and Selma's hours are 6 to 8. So as you guys can see, celebrations are very quickly approaching and police do want to remind you that if you do feel unsafe anywhere, make sure you call them. And of course, there will be more information up at BallStateDaily.com. Perfect. Thank you, Emily. Ball State's Fashion Merchandising Association is having its annual pop-up thrift shop this week. This is the first time in two years that the pop-up has been able to happen due to COVID-19. Now with a new location and a fresh start, FMA is ready to bring back this tradition. This pop-up is now being held in the village between Brothers and Hoku Poke. In years past, it took place on Ball State's campus inside the atrium. FMA's president says this new location is better for all. Found out that we had access to this space in the village, and we were like, this would be a perfect way to actually have a bigger event and have bigger fundraising since we weren't able to do any fundraising uh, this past year and a half. And also, I feel like it's a better opportunity for all of our um, members to get more professional building skills because that is a main part of our club. Although the pop-up is back, the club is still trying to bounce back. With less student involvement, Osmeyer says she's been trying to rebuild FMA in different ways. COVID, we're like, okay, like let's really do as much as we can. Um, but I know that we are looking to get involved with the Cardinal Closet as well at some point. Um, but just trying to make more connections on campus this year and start keeping the momentum of building the club up. But what makes this pop-up thrift shop different is just that, the thrifting. The group has a goal to promote sustainability and bring awareness to the fast fashion industry. So many clothes get wasted. Fast fashion is a big problem. Um, just all the overproduction of clothes and just throwing them away and throwing them away. 
sustainability is honestly going to help the environment overall and like you reuse reduce reuse recycle you know the pop-up shop will run until friday with doors opening at 2 p.m for more information you can visit fma's instagram page and Vincent, today would have been the perfect day to go to the pop-up shop, grab a jacket or two, because it's getting really chilly out there. Absolutely. I know my walk to campus this morning was pretty cold. Adam, what do you have? Yeah, it was a pretty chilly morning this morning. We actually had our first frost of the season, and we're seeing temperatures rapidly decrease once again now that the sun has gone down. It is currently 48 degrees here in Muncie, 48 up in the Fort Wayne, 51 down to Indianapolis, and 50 over into Lafayette. Now, it was a little bit on the colder side this morning, but... We did see plenty of sunshine. I am tracking some clouds begin to move into the area. Most of those clouds will begin to move in after, after midnight tonight as well. Some of these showers will begin to push into the area later tonight and into tomorrow and for your day on Friday. Back to you guys. Thank you, Adam. Transitioning into some more headlines tonight with film for Rust shut down indefinitely following the death of director of photography, Helena Hutchins. More behind the scenes details from the production are coming to light. One of the actors from the movie speaking out, describing a scene when his character is shot and killed and saying it felt, quote, life-threatening. When they shot at me, um, I actually did feel the blanks hitting my face and my body. And um, I could feel the wind from the shotgun, you know, being discharged. It was heavy. It was strong. And I would talk to my fellow cast members afterwards, and we all agreed how intense that was and how scary and real it was. Meanwhile, an inventory list from a search warrant reveals investigators found three revolvers, nine spent casings and ammunition loose in boxes and in a fanny pack on set. After further investigation, Santa Fe County Sheriff Aiden Mendoza says they have collected about 600 items of evidence and that the projectile that killed Hutchins was a suspected live round. Santa Fe District Attorney Mary Carmack Altwise says the investigation is far from over. All options are on the table at this point. I'm not, take, I'm not commenting on charges, whether they will be filed or not, or on whom. So the answer is we, we cannot answer that question yet until we complete a more thorough investigation. As the investigation continues, Newslink Indiana will be sure to, be sure to bring you the latest. Questions also being answered in California. This as a federal judge ordered the Los Angeles County Sheriff and Fire Chief to explain photos of the Kobe Bryant crash scene. Those images leaked after a helicopter crash that killed the basketball star and eight others in January of 2020. His widow, Vanessa Bryant, is suing the county over them. She claims they were shared by sheriffs and fire officials in settings that were irrelevant to the investigation, including a bar. The judge's ruling allows her attorneys to depose the sheriff and fire chief. Meanwhile, lawyers for the county are asking for her to undergo a psychiatric evaluation to prove her claim the leaked photos caused her emotional distress. The State Department announcing a new option on U.S. passports. What change you could see? Plus, Delta is planning on making your airplane experience a little bit smoother. Find out how after the break. Riding the bus is an easy thing to do. Last year, we carried 60,000 riders from the Ball State area. 50,000 of those were students. Anywhere you want to go, Mitz will take you there.
So I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. There are now more so-called protected areas from immigration enforcement actions. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Morcas issued a memo that increases the list of these locations, which now includes domestic violence shelters and playgrounds. DHSS says there are exceptions to these protected areas, and they include if the person being posed as a public safety threat or a national security threat. This move is another part of the Biden administration's effort to take another look at how it deals with immigration issues. The administration recently put a stop to mass worksite arrests by focusing on the employers who hire undocumented workers. Uh, there will soon be a third gender option on U.S. passports. The State Department announcing that the first passport with an ex-gender designation has been issued and will be available to non-binary, intersex, and gender non-conforming people early next year. The U.S. Special Diplomatic Envoy for LGBTQ Rights, Jessica Stern, says the announcement brings government documents in line with the, quote, lived reality that there is a wider spectrum of human sex characteristics that previously reflected on passports. The department did not mention who the passport was issued to due to privacy concerns. With more people flying, airport travelers are once again seeing delays, cancellations, and long lines. But new facial recognition technology could cut down waiting times at security checkpoints. This from the new partnership between Delta Airlines and the TSA. Bag checks typically take about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. It's now down to 30 seconds. And the process of verifying your identity at checkpoints is now down to only 6 seconds. The trial will start at Delta's busiest hub for those in Delta's frequent flyer program who have also been enrolled in the TSA pre-check. Passports and visa photos in a federal database are compared with your live photo. The TSA says flies are immediately destroyed, increasing, excuse me, files are immediately destroyed, increasing security from cyber threats and hacks. If you're an Apple user, you now can keep COVID-19 vaccine and test information on your device. Providers can digitally sign the documents, then you can store them in the health app. You can also transfer your vaccine card to the Apple wallet. The features are available for iPhone and iPod Touch devices that are running iOS 15. Costco is raising its minimum wage to $17 an hour. This is the second time this year the retailer has hiked workers' pay. In February, the company raised hourly wages to $16 an hour. Costco has about 180,000 U.S. employees, and 90% of them work hourly. This new raise is about $2 above Amazon, Target, and other top retailers. Several large companies have increased wages recently as they compete for labor. And it would be a perfect weekend to go out, get some hot cocoa at Costco, and sip while the temperatures go down. Absolutely. Adam? Yeah, temperatures will, temperatures will continue to decrease with rain coming in to end the week. What beautiful weather for this weekend. My full forecast coming up after the break. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Emotes say a lot, but they can't say it all. Think your guildmate is struggling? Try these dialogue options. Go 
beyond emotes. Check in with your guildmates at seizetheawkward.org. Every day, every day, millions of people are connecting. And even though we're overcoming obstacles, watching each other's backs, and banding together, we should still make an effort. We should still make an effort to get to know each other on a deeper level. Father, cosplayer, mentor, actor. It's time we take a step forward. It's time we take a step forward. Come together and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. Welcome back. The time is now 9.15 and you're taking a live look at campus out there. It's looking pretty clear tonight. I'm hoping that it'll stay that way. Absolutely. Wouldn't you'd hate to see a change and change from a beautiful night. Exactly. And, you know, speaking of a little bit of this record rainfall that we've been having from the west coast to the east, heavy rainfall is making flooding a major concern. In the U.S., floods are a leading cause of death and weather related disasters. And experts are urging to you to stay safe, especially with all the flood warnings for Indiana. After record rainfall in the West, tens of millions of Americans are facing flood threats. The immediate health impacts of floods include drowning, injuries, hypothermia, and insect or animal bites. Most flood-related deaths are attributed to flash floods. That's why the Red Cross is urging anyone near flooding to stay aware and not go outside in the peak of any storm unless you have to. And if you find yourself driving and there's a road covered in water, be sure to turn around. Now, Adam, I'm not sure, is this a record rainfall going to be affecting us in Indiana? Yeah, we, we had a little, not a little, quite a bit of rainfall on Sunday. We had a little bit of flooding on the White River. Water was over the banks, but not too much for us here, luckily. But Absolutely. I saw when I was walking down the sidewalk, some of the rain was just all over the sidewalks. Yeah, no rain today, but... Starting to see temperatures a little bit on the colder side and see sunshine for a little bit. With tomorrow, it was a very beautiful day today across the area. Plenty of sunshine. However, we did see our first frost this morning. Since we are starting to see temperatures a little bit on the colder side, currently it is 48 degrees here in Muncie. 48 up into Fort Wayne, 51 to Indianapolis, 50 down to Bloomington, and 50 over into Lafayette. So looks like I chose the correct color of blue because we are starting to see a lot more blue on the weather map indicating we're starting to see temperatures down to the 40s and even down into the 30s. Now, clear radar for the moment right now. However, I am tracking some clouds begin to push into the area. Expect to see this cloud cover continue to thicken over the next couple hours with some rain showers pushing, pushing, pushing slowly in behind them after midnight tonight. So let me break down the timing of you for those showers. By 10 a.m. tomorrow, we're starting to see those showers really begin to push into the area. So expect to see showers for most of the morning tomorrow. So for Muncie, and in the Indy area, expect to see your heaviest rainfall around dinner time tomorrow. Showers continue out through the evening and afternoon. By midnight, it clears a lot for most of central and southern Indiana. In northern Indiana, this is where you're going to expect to see your heaviest rainfall as well. So showers continuing throughout the day Friday. Mostly cloudy skies for the day Friday, but some heavier showers Friday evening. So might not be a bad idea to start to break out those rain boots, jackets, and umbrellas because it will rain for most of the day tomorrow and on Friday. Tonight. Increasing clouds throughout the evening and dropping down to 46 degrees. So a little bit on the cooler side, not as cold as we had this morning where we saw 32 degrees in frost, but still cool enough that you will most likely want to grab a sweater or a sweatshirt as you head out the door tomorrow, as well as that umbrella tomorrow. Getting up to 56 degrees, showers for most of the day, rain 90% chance, winds a little bit on the calmer side. So as you head out the door, grab an umbrella. It will rain for most of the day tomorrow. Last week, I, I introduced you to my flannel forecast. So we had temperatures sitting up in the 60s as well as lows down in the 50s, but now we're seeing temperatures 5 to 10 degrees below average with highs up in the 50s and lows down to the 40s. So I'd like to introduce you my sweater weather forecast. Now, don't worry, these aren't your low, these aren't your high temperatures. These are actually your low temperatures that you will see in the next morning. So between 7 to 8 a.m. when you're getting ready, you're working out, or as you're heading out the door. By 7 a.m. on Friday morning, 53 degrees, but then throughout the end of the week and into the weekend, expect the temperatures drop down to 41 on Monday. So perf perfect sweater weather once we get past all these rain showers and beautiful weather for Halloween as well. 52 degrees to start your day, 56 by 8 p.m. So pretty nice evening. Get out, dress up with some friends, go have a good time, go volunteer with a group of friends at a trick or treat, just have fun. And taking a look at your seven day forecast, Rain to end the week, but a lot of that rain will be out of the area Saturday. Beautiful weather on Sunday, high of 59 degrees with plenty of sunshine, but that sunshine will begin to move out as clouds 
move into the area on Monday and Tuesday before we see the chance of rain return on Wednesday. Now, you know it's starting to get cold when me, who's a weirdo who likes to wear shorts and t-shirts to shovel snow, is walking around campus with sweater and jeans. <laughs> it is getting pretty chilly out there. Thank you, Adam. Now we'll take a look at some sports. One Ball State team reflects on their fall as they head toward the spring, and an area track phenom is looking towards more success at state. Next in sports. Here's your sandwich, miss. Oh, thank you. And your burger. Awesome, thank you. And your bowl of boiling water, sir. After retiring from the NFL, I've been able to spend a lot more time coaching my daughter's basketball teams. It's something I love to do. Through our games and our tournaments, we see all types of coaching, good and bad. And it begs the question, do we really know who's coaching our kids? Do they have the proper training and screening it would take for me to be comfortable with my daughters playing for that coach? Our Youth Basketball Association made the decision to use trusted coaches to screen and train all of our coaches. I'm a trusted coach. Are you? So if one cat has four kittens who reproduce every six months, how many cats will there be in five years? <coughs> Who's got it? Is this, what is that? <coughs> Seriously. Who threw that? Cats are terrible at math, but they sure do multiply. Please spay, neuter, and adopt. The solution is 10. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Philip Shorze with sports. Basketball player Enos Cantor calling out Nike co-founder Phil Knight over allegations of forced labor in China. Cantor posted a video along with other Twitter posts where he draws attention to the quote, modern day slavery in China and said, quote, what is happening to the Uyghurs is one of the worst human rights abuses in the world today. With the start of the NBA season underway, Cantor has been actively using social media to continue criticizing the situation in China. Meanwhile, Nike has remained silent on the issue. The NBA and Nike signed an eight-year apparel deal beginning with the 17-18 season. And moving outside, a high school cross-country athlete has er, her eyes set on one more finish line. Newslink Indiana's Imani Butts has the story. Another year? Another opportunity to represent Delta High School at the girls' cross-country state finals. Sophomore Nikki Sutherland qualified for the state finals for the second time in her high school career by placing first at last week's semi-state meet. Once again, she is the only runner representing the Eagles. And as a freshman, Sutherland placed ninth at state, but this year she's ready to sprint her way past the top ten. I'm hoping to get in the top three and just improve and get a better time than I did last year on the course. I think it helps that she's been there once now. Um, she knows what to expect and what it's gonna be like. I think she's also more familiar with um, how the competition is gonna play out. Um, and that has helped her a lot just embrace the idea of she's gonna challenge herself on, on Saturday. The challenge is beating her semi-state time of 17.55. But with a new running strategy and some rest, Sutherland is prepared to put that plan into action to cross that last finish line. If my times have gotten faster at semi-state, I was about 10 seconds faster on the same course and like I'm feeling better and focusing on all around strength this year. The biggest goal is still to have fun and enjoy it as with any athlete, but um, in terms of racing, um, to put all of those things that we've practiced into play on the day that she needs to. Sutherland is currently second in state rankings, and she hopes to take this weekend in stride. In Muncie, Imani Butts, Newslink, Indiana. Now, Ball State men's golf fall season has come to an end, and players have begun to reflect on the season behind them. 
as they review this past season and look forward to the spring, the team acknowledges that they experienced both the good and the bad. The team claims that the veteran leadership of their coaches and upperclassmen had a positive influence on the team's performance. Junior Joey Wiseman claimed the team grew from inexperience to blossoming into their full potential through each game and practice. He also said that every player had a target at a certain area of their game to focus on before they head towards MAC in the spring. Both Wiseman and senior Joey Ranieri claim that the team's atmosphere is part of what keeps them coming back to the course. Ranieri also acknowledged the game is something that he is grateful plays such a large part in his life. That I've played for a long time, put a lot of hours into it, and some, something that I want to do for a living. But at the same time, uh, I realize that it's, a, it's an opportunity and it's a privilege, uh, not a right, to play this game. Thank you, Philip. Students in Ohio celebrating Halloween in a unique way. Find out how. Plus, trick or treat starting soon. Which candy is Indiana's favorite after the break? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Baby, you see, I cannot set you free. My lonely days are gone. That's why I'm never gonna let you go. Never gonna let you go. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Just like the rules to surviving Zombieland, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated. And stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared. So start now. Right now? Right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. Time for us to take a look at what's trending. Joining us now is NewsLink Indiana's Zach Martin. Zach, what do you got for us? Uh, good evening, guys. I got a couple of stories for you. I think you're going to like them. Perfect. With Halloween being only a few days away, some students in Ohio are already starting to celebrate. The annual pumpkin roll is happening in suburban Cleveland a few days before Halloween. The event started as a prank by some high school students in 1967 and has endured since then. Students will bring a dump truck full of pumpkins and unload them on the top of a hill. The participating students even raise money to get the pumpkins, pay the fine they get for illegal dumping, and clean up the mess. On Halloween, tons of candy are handed out to kids across the country. Have you ever wondered what the most popular candy is? An interactive map at candystore.com shows what the most popular candy in each state is. For many states, chocolate is the most popular choice, and others like Montana chose bubblegum. Indiana's favorite candy was shown to be Starburst. Uh, what do you guys think? You think Starburst is a good option? Starburst is perfect. Absolutely. My favorite one is orange. All right. Now we're going to take one final look at weather. I know my favorite one is chocolate, but I'm starting to break out that hot chocolate with these cooler temperatures right over the next couple of days before moving out of the area Saturday morning. Plenty of sunshine on Sunday, but that sunshine won't stay around much longer with clouds on Monday and Tuesday with a chance of rain on Wednesday. Thank you, Adam. That's all tonight for NewsLink Indiana. Be sure to join us again tomorrow, streaming, nine, streaming at 9, live on the NewsLink Indiana Facebook page. And for news anytime, anywhere, go to BallStateDaily.com. Have a great night.